do I look like a like a chic farmer in this shirt because that's the look I'm going for so I'm wearing this shirt because I asked my fiance John yesterday does this shirt look good on me answer me honestly and he said yes it does you look cute and I didn't believe him and I took it off guys don't do what I do Hey guys, it's Cameron here at Pray Like a Girl, and today we're gonna talk about body image, which I realize is a very over-discussed topic on the internet, but for some reason, even though it is, everybody still has sucky body image. So it's not just teenagers, tweenagers, it's young adults and adults too, because here's the thing is, our bodies are constantly changing, and so sometimes it feels like you know, you get used to who you are in one skin and then all of a sudden you're in another stage of life and you have a totally different skin to get used to. Obviously, we are loved no matter what our skin looks like, no matter what our bodies look like, but also very obviously it's very hard for us to accept that like 99% of the time. When I was in middle school and elementary school and like younger, preschool, kindergarten, you know, I was super cute, I thought I was super cute. And yeah, I was super cute. And then when I started getting into like middle school and high school, I didn't think of myself as very cute. My fiance lovingly nicknamed me middle part Cameron when he saw pictures of me from high school because I had a middle part and maybe I shouldn't have had a middle part. Okay, it's fine. It's fine now. <laughs> when I was in high school, well, middle school and high school, but high school especially, I definitely felt that, you know, that I feel like every single person feels. You're not pretty enough. Nobody likes you because you're not pretty enough. Blah, 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 blah. I let those voices continue for a lot longer than they should have into my college years and then as a young adult. But as a young adult, I started thinking more. I remember at one point in my life, wishing that I could lose weight, which I'm sure everybody does. And thinking, well, maybe I'll wait till I'm dating someone and then I'll lose weight for them. And then I thought, that's so stupid because I should be doing that for me because I want to be healthy. Also, side note, I feel like you can tell you're in a good relationship when you're in it and you like gain weight because you're like, I literally don't care what this person thinks of me because they're gonna love me no matter what. So I was thinking about this and you know praying about it and i had a sudden revelation that's a pun and you'll see why i started thinking about the second coming when our physical earthly bodies are reunited with our heavenly souls and we're able to enjoy heaven physically as well as spiritually our bodies will be in a glorified state right that's what the church teaches us and I remember my CCD teacher telling me in eighth grade that when our bodies are glorified, any small imperfections will be gone. You know, our bodies will be glorified. They will be perfected. So like your eyesight, I wear glasses in case you didn't know, my eyesight's terrible. I'll have 20-20 vision in heaven. That blows my mind. I can't even picture that happening. I was thinking about this. I'm thinking, oh, my body is going to be perfect in heaven. I'm going to be so pretty, going to be so skinny. And then a thought kind of struck me, which I think was from the Holy Spirit. And it was, what if you look exactly as you do now when your body is in a glorified state? What if the resurrection of the body happens and it's this body right here, right now, this one that's got like the lip pimples going on? What if this body is the one that you're reunited with? Are you gonna look at it and say, that's not perfect? <laughs> because God is the one who made that body and God is the one who is gonna give it back to you. God sees it in a perfect way. By human standards, our bodies are not perfect. Maybe we could lose some weight. Maybe we have too many freckles. Or lip pimples. Now, yeah, that thought just really struck me and it kind of changed my entire mindset on how I view myself because what if you're already perfect? You know, obviously it's good to try to lose weight if you're doing it for a healthy reason um, because you want to be stronger, because you want to be healthier, but the tiny things that don't really matter, 
they, Christ made those, and he thinks they're perfect already. That kind of sounds cheesy and cliche when you say it, you know, Jesus made you perfect, he made you just the way you are for a reason. Those words are said so often to us as young women and young girls that it kind of just is easy to let it go in one ear and out the other, right? Like, oh yeah, I know that, I'm perfect, whatever. And it's not very often that we sit and let that soak in and really absorb the meaning of it. If you take something away from this kind of ramble, it's that you should come to your own revelation. <laughs> now you get the pun. What your glorified body will be in heaven. You know, it's never a bad idea to meditate on heaven. Think about your expectations or your ideas of what that might be like and of what your glorified body might be like. Next time somebody tells you you're enough, somebody tells you that you are beautiful, somebody tells you that you do look good in that shirt, then you should listen. It's so easy to brush it off, but just listen. And behind those words, you might hear Christ speaking to you. Have a wonderful weekend, friends, and you're beautiful. Here at Pray Like a Girl, we put out a video every Friday. We talk about lots of things, but mostly we talk about the intersection of Catholicism, womanhood, prayer, discernment, and also just like random stuff. Click the subscribe button, hit that notification bell, so that way you'll get notified every time we post a video. Because trust me, you're gonna wanna see more of this.